Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I kind of wanted to do a little something improvised, which is the way it seems to be trending, at least right now, for my channel. It's just um, life is busy and it's hard to sometimes create material. And as an artist, we're scatterbrained and you know, we have all these dreams and wishes, and we just, uh, you know, keep piling them up in some some basket of mess that eventually gets lost. Um, it's an inside joke I have with my mom, <laughs> actually. But um, if you're curious, let me know, and I'll tell you all about it. But um, basically, uh, I, I wanted to go over um, some of the things that sometimes I do in post-production. I one one of my biggest down uh, downfalls when it came to post production is to um, spend too much time playing around with files and images and, and and things that I like and not getting not being productive with the stuff that needs to be done you know the bulk so this is kind of part of the distractions uh, this is part of what happens in in the creative process as I'm looking through photos and as I'm calling which. Um, I should probably do a piece on calling because it, it was a real big struggle for me. So lately, I have been breaking it down to a more feasible um, bite chunks that hopefully maybe you guys can utilize. So add it to the basket of dreams. Um, but this one is more about habits that we just create and, and, and things that we as photographers either do or don't. Um, in our in our community it's often frowned up on to to do certain things or is considered cool to do certain others and in in the last few years in my business I have learned that I don't really care for it. Uh, you know the community's part uh, in that aspect in that for that for that part of it. Um, so I just, you know, I, I have learned to just trust my instincts and, and I'm learning as I go along. So hopefully by sharing, you can learn with me. Um, this one is about Photoshop. Uh, I don't really do a whole lot of Photoshop in my files. I'm, I'm a little bit of a purist, you know, even though I, 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 I said what I just said, I, uh, deep inside, I, I I am a little bit of a purist, and and even some things that people do in photographs, I I, I frown upon. So I'm guilty for it just as well. Um, I, you know, I don't do a whole lot of post production except for the video that I actually already shared. Some of that post processing aspects of it. Um, that being said, this one is one that I I develop as a as a habit. Um, from early on and it kind of stuck with me a little bit and it requires Photoshop so I will be photoshopping something and I'm gonna share it with you guys now I wanted to share with you guys a little tool that I use because uh, even for me I I come from a background of graphic design I'm actually quite proficient in in, in Adobe software uh, Photoshop included the end design all that stuff yet I suck at it because I just don't use it enough so I found this little tool a while ago. Um, it's called Motiboto. I will put the link below if I remember because I forgot to put a link the last time. But anyway, what this is is just like keys to use your, your post processing for Photoshop. So they have one for InDesign, and I mean, um, uh, they have one for um, Lightroom and one for Photoshop. So this is the Photoshop one, and it really kind of saves my life because this. There's things that I just forget all the time, and there's only certain tools that I do use. So for me to spend hours learning a software when I only use it very minimally, is is not conductive. So uh, plus I don't have the time. I have babies running around, so that's usually takes half my life. So, um, but with this little tool, I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that I can do. Um, but yeah, so check it out. Is it, if you're into hotkeys, you definitely want to be able to do that. So, all right. So, what I'm going to do here is basically I'm looking through these photos as I'm calling and editing at the same time, and I kind of, you know, like I'm looking through my photos, blah blah blah, do do do, and then I come across this set over here. 
that there's something about these photos that I just love, you know. Um, I personally like this one, and I kind of like the aspect that he's, you know, I like this photo right here, and I like it with him walking and when she acknowledging him rather than her looking at me and, you know, she looking at me. Now, there's all the ways I can definitely do this. Um, there's many ways in, in which I could actually edit this because technically, um, you know, I personally love this this standing posture here, minus the golf cart. So, you know, so there's all the ways we could do it. These are moments when you shoot, and, and I guess I should actually say that when you shoot like a, like, like a lifestyle photographer, <laughs> In a, a, a post photographer, you might have more control of these things, and your brain might work more in this full, you know, incorporated ideas, uh, compositions. That my mind, as a as a as a, as a moment capture kind of photographer, storyteller type of photographer, um, do doesn't. My brain doesn't work. I just did a wedding this past weekend where I had a bride. It wasn't really my bride. Long story, but um, she wanted a lot of portraits, and I learned this along the way. And it was it's quite stressful because your style no longer fits with this person, and you gotta do a job. You know that that is one of the best uh, pieces of advice I got from um, uh, what's his name? Um, I think it's uh, Fernando Valenzuela. I think that's his name. Uh, I know his last name is Valenzuela, but um, he said sometimes just shit happens and and days don't go perfectly and you don't have the perfect people or whatever the case may be and you just, you're a professional. You treat it like a job and there'll be another one next week, God willing. So um, that's kind of what I have to do in this situation and I found that just there is either time to do one or the other. It's actually, a, it was a great experience because it's been a while since I've been in that situation and I had this epiphany about why I do what I do. And it's not necessarily because I can't do traditional or not, or I can't do both or whatever. The fact is that I choose storytelling because I think it's, important. it's more important. It, it means more in the end, and that's what I want to sort of deliver to, to the people that I work with. But at the same time, I realized after this past weekend, you can't do both. There's no time to do a list of photos and there's to do a bunch of, you know, traditional portraitures and details and, 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 and all this controlled photography and capture a story. They're, it's just impossible. I, you, you can have a second photographer there to do it and even with that situation, I still don't think it's conducted because the photographer, let's say you give the second photographer the additional photographer or your partner, whatever it is. Um, the the job of take, capturing all those details or capturing all those um, uh, portraits that takes away from the story because that's being done and it's either taking away the time of the couple or it's taking away some of the elements that make this composition you know make this story put it together so anyway so I, I don't regress but the point being that I, as the style that I do I will often find maybe two or three situations per wedding where I might put a couple of minutes if it seems worthwhile. And I don't know if this is gonna work. Once again, it's on the fly. But I figure it would be a good example. And um, I think people in our industry talk a lot about transparency, but I find sometimes it could be very scarce, 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 um, very rare. Um, and I'm trying to be as transparent as I can. You know, I, I'm putting it all out there. So a couple of you guys have been following me. I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm thankful. So uh, I'm going to try to keep putting content out. Hopefully it's not too raw and not too um, vague and and it's useful in some way. So this is part of it. All right. So, okay. So basically, real quick, um, we have this image that I said I like of him walking. And I like this image of the card you know, kind of going away. In this image, he's too far away, so obstructing with this area here, and I don't like that. So I like him exactly right here. And I, at the same time, I don't like my bride looking at me, and then I don't, you know, I actually don't mind him this way. Technically, all I could do would be flip her, 
But, um, and actually we can do it both ways. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open these two and I will go over also this, this hotkeys thing. And, but I also use the one for Lightroom. I don't use the Motivoto anymore for Lightroom. It was giving me issues in the past and I just, in, in the process of it, I actually moved to, to the ones for, for, um, for Visco Cam. I use their, their hotkeys and I like them. I can customize them my way. And I actually ended up customizing them the same way my Motivoto for Lightroom was set up. So, you know, it just made it easier. And sometimes I, I like to try new things and waste money. And in this case, it actually was useful. So, um, so I have him. And let's say I just want to flip her. Um, the easiest way probably, you got, you got to pick your battles. You know, you got to sort of decide which one is better. So I am going to say I want the car, so this is my light, my light is different. She's going to get hit probably almost by exactly the same light. So I could even go as far as selecting the entire front, the entire image, but I'm not going to because it just it might take too long to render. But I might pick her, um, I don't need his shadow, but let's pick it for this photo because I might use it to do a second version of it. So I'm just going to pick this, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it onto here. Now, the way I do it is quite, you know, rustic-y, uh, quite, um, you know, whatever the word is, just, you know, quite simple and, and maybe not the most technical way to do it, but it works for me and it's fast and that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking to make clipping masks or do anything crazy. I want it to just be right, look good, and be unnoticeable. And that's usually my goal. And it's the same thing that I do sometimes if I do any kind of, um, uh, you know, um, liquefying uh, of, of couples, of, of, of brides or anything like that, arms, stomachs, anything. I don't want it to be noticeable. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I have never even heard a bride say that I did it. So I, I they just think that they naturally look like that even if I, um, you know, took, you know, shrink them down two or three or even sometimes more sizes. So that's pretty much it. I overlay them and I can bring the opacity back up and basically all I got to do at this point is go to my um, my mask here I think that's what it's called um, my layer mask that's what it is I can add a layer mask to this layer here in this case I can actually fill that layer mask with the foreground, I think it's white. I hope I'm not wrong. No, nope, it's, it's the background, it's gotta be black. So you fill it with black and you technically wipe the whole entire overlay layer on top of that image off. Now, if you take the eraser tool and now is when my Motivoto comes into play, I'm gonna turn it on, you're gonna see that little Chinese sign that just kind of popped up there. And with my Motivoto, here, I have learned some of the keys. So with my Motivoto, if I use the T and the Y, I can actually make this uh, selection bigger or smaller by just using my keyboard, which is really fast. Um, so now I just gotta make sure I'm in the, in the side that exposes. Come on, expose. Oh, am I on the wrong side? Yeah, I'm on the wrong side, okay, good, so now. I just choose the side to expose the image on top of it, and this is what I'm going to do. Check it out. Let's see. Um, it's a little bit too much grain in this image. Um, I can bring the opacity up a little bit. Actually, I can bring the opacity up, let's say 100%. And I can actually do that on my Multiboto as well. But So let's see, I bring my image 100%. So now. She is completely, fully, the top image. So if you see, that's my bottom image, top image, bottom image, top image. So that's the case. Um, now in that case, I might, in, you know, bring this down a little bit, the opacity down a little bit and inverse these, which I can also do in Multivoto by using a key and make this a little bit smaller and just kind of figure out a way where, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's like painting little, little happy clouds. 
All right, so let's say that's it. Um, now, by looking at this image, now I realize that my original image, uh, the one that I want to replace her out of, is a little bit better quality than this one. This one's a little soft, as you can see. And this one, on the other hand, is a lot better. So, but you know, what are you going to do? In that case, you know what I could do, actually? Simple enough, just to minimize the damage in a situation like this. I would um, use, let's see if I can get away with it. I would use her, sorry, taking too long now. Uh, see her dress a lot sharper here, if you can tell. And her position and her um, body hasn't really changed. All, all the change was her head. So I could actually do only a head um, alteration here. So I just flip the colors here and I could actually do this. Let me see. And I just kind of have to move this layer a little bit. Now I'm going to go a little bit faster than I might in another situation. Might mess around with it a little bit tighter, but just so you get an idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, her shoulders here, so maybe I'll just move that image over a little tiny bit. There you go. There you go, pretty much. Now, because it's such a small image, nobody will ever tell the difference on that, you know? Uh, and that's really kind of like a choice you have to do. So that already be like a cool, like if I'm going to print this big or if I'm going to use it for my Instagram file or my 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 my, uh, my Facebook account then I might do that you know and the other thing I could actually do in this image here is maybe use him like that so um, we know he's here somewhere so we can just have to expose him where is he? There he is I just do this and uh, now, because of his, see, the difference on angle, like as the camera was turned, then this is not going to match. So what I might do instead is actually take a second selection of him and just use him directly on here. So I can actually get rid of this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm rid of him here, and I can actually put the other image down. Oops, sorry. Copy, paste. I can even get rid of him right on top of where he was originally. So I don't even have to worry about adjusting his shadow. So and this will be a little rough as well, but. You get the idea. And that's it. All I have to do is just kind of make this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just got to soften this edge around him a little bit. Now, one big pet peeve of mine is when I see glows around images and this is something that in this case I would be very aware of and with my multivoto I can also change the feathering around the brush if you notice that little thing I did right there um, but um, in this case you know I'm gonna do it quickly but in an, if it was a, a master kind of image I will probably spend a little bit more time on making sure that I don't see that soft um, slight change of color around him because I pick those things up like really well on images and one of the worst ones I always see is the ones of um, the ones of uh, photographers who use a lot of flash 
at night times and things like this or in other situations and they need to make the subject that they under they under flashed it basically and they need to make the subjects more you know brighter or whatever and then you see that glow around the image you know where they touched it a little bit more in the background it's just not gonna match so those things I I'm totally against now this thing if we're a little bit more tweaking you will never tell the difference so yeah so we can go from this to that in just a matter of a few seconds and this little color change here you see is my screen uh, has a little bit of a dirt on the inside or something but yeah that's it so hopefully you guys like this and if you have any questions just let me know um, if not please check out my website at giancarlophotography.com the link will be below as well and uh, if you have any questions post them up ask questions uh, you know leave me some feedback and, and uh, I appreciate you guys alright